Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 704. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 703 to 706. Hey, here we have uh, an interesting question um, and really more. what's even more interesting is the process that I use to solve this and think about how to solve a problem. Now here's the setup. We have a little invoice and if a customer has an X and an X here in both of those cells, we need $24. If they instead put X's in those two cells, meaning they're selecting a ca some categories here, it needs to be 16.5. And if it's just one, just a single X there, it needs to be 40. All right, so one way to do this, uh, and actually is to build an if, right? Because there's three possibilities um, and various things are going on here. But before I did that, I was thinking, you know, how many possibilities are there? Because we're doing three of them, but there's some other possibilities. And just in case someone comes along and accidentally, you know, enters the incorrect, uh, something that's not allowed, we need to, to think about what our formula is going to do. So I came over here and I said, hey, how many things are going into each cell? Well, there's an X or a blank, so that's two, and there's three slots, that's three. So before I even tried to list all the possibilities, I said, oh, well, I can figure out all the possibilities, right? Two caret three, two raised to the third power, and that gives me, in essence, in statistics, the sample space, all the possibilities. Then I came over here and I uh, tried to list them all, and sometimes it's hard with this small data set like this, it's not too hard, right? But one of them was in cell D3 and 4. We had two X's. We also had this one, and we had just that one. Here's the other possibilities, right? And those ones, we don't want anything to happen. Now, okay, with that in mind, we can try and build a formula. Equals, and we're going to use if. But wait a second, look at this, there's three things. So in the first case, we have to check, is this cell blank, and does this have an X, and does this have an X? If all three of those are true, then what do we want? We want 1650. So let's just use AND function. It can have, in 2010, up to 255, and possible logical tests, and earlier versions it was like 30. We have three and they're just logical tests. They either come out true or false. So we say, is this equal to, and then double quotes for blank. And is this one equal to double quotes x? I'm actually going to copy that because we're going to have to use that a lot. And the third logical test is this one, control V equal to x. Now we close parentheses on that and see the screen tip jumps back. We're from we just did our logical test, so value of true. Well, value of true is going to be, and I can't get to that cell there, so I'm going to click there and then down arrow. I think it was 1650, right? Now, comma, and we get to value of false. Anytime you have more than one value of false, you put another if. So I'm going to say if, and now what's our next test? Well, we kind of visualized it over here for ourselves, so now this makes it easy. I'm going to do and. This one, control V. There's our logical test, comma. This one, equal double quote, which is blank, comma. And then finally, I'm still looking there. This one, control V. Now there's our third logical test. We close it off. And if this is the case, we want, and I'm still blocked out. I think that number was 24 or something. So I'm going to click there and then down arrow. So I got H9. Finally, uh, we hit a comma, and not finally, but we have value of false. Well, again, we have more than one possibility left. So we're going to say if, and now we have to check for this one. And we have two blanks. So we say this one equal to blank, this one equal to blank, and this one, and I'm going to control V equal to X. There's our third logical. And if that's true, logical test for the third F, comma, and I want that one right there. Now, comma and value of false. 
everything else we either want to show a zero there or a blank. Now if we're using the sum function, if we put blank it won't mess it up. If we're using the plus symbols then a blank would mess up the formula. If you're using plus symbols you'd have to put a zero. I'm going to put a blank because we're going to use the sum function. Now we have lots of ifs and this final we're in, we're in the middle of the third if, but that value if false, if we put it in there, it'll apply for all the earlier ones too as the last possibility. Now, how many parentheses do we have to put? Well, we just keep watching until we see the black one and then we hit enter. Now we got to go test it and we got to test all the possibilities. I'm going to start off right off the bat by putting X's everywhere. It better show blank. How about two X's there? So I'm testing this one right here. How about just an X there? All right, so I'm testing that one. Right. How about all blank? Well, we already saw that. Now, how about this? I hold Control to highlight both of those cells. X, Control Enter to put them both in there. 24, looks like it's working. Delete X, looks like it's working. And finally, looks like it's working. Now, there is one potential problem here. If we enter data this way, x and then x, which most people are going to do, it's going to pop up right. But watch this. What if this person wants um, this category right here, right? And they don't enter it in here first, they enter it in here. For a moment, they might go, now that's totally wrong. But it's right, our formula is right because we, if an x, just a single x there, it's 40. Now, and then they come up here, if they don't get thrown off by that, then of course they put their x there and the formula updates. Now, we could make this even more robust. We could just disallow people from putting the x's and create a category, right? Um, that automatic and, and a formula that automatically puts the x's in. So now let's let's um, think about this. I want to actually copy this and paste it down here. So I'm going to control C, but I want to paste it in a certain way. Uh, you can either go up to paste special, this is 2010, you transpose, or you can right click paste special, notice, uh, and then use the transpose right here, and it will flip, its on it, flip, it, flip it on its side. I'm going to click OK. And actually, uh, but uh, what I want to use is I want to use VLOOKUP. I want to use VLOOKUP to do two things, and we'll, we'll use this over here. I want VLOOKUP to automatically fill in the X's, and we're going to have an option over here. So we're going to have to name these categories, right? Uh, these two X's, uh, we'll name, that's when we have uh, these two right here. So we'll name that AM, PM, and K. So AM, PM, and K. This one right here is when we have these two, so that'll be PM and Kindergarten. PM and Kindergarten. Or you can, we can name them whatever we want. But something that someone using a drop down, you know, you probably want to spell this out. Uh, and finally, just K. Probably want to spell all these out or whatever the name of the category is. Now, we can use a drop. Uh, build a data validation list drop down here and base it on this and then the person using the invoice will just select. This will auto populate and it will auto populate uh, uh, the correct number also. I'm going to use data uh, data tools. I might, my screen is very small. Data validation in earlier versions. Uh, data menu and then data validation. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt DL. I'm going to allow list tab and the source is going to be right here. So there we have our source. Now we have a drop down. Now we want to do two things. We want a formula that we can put here and copy down that will put in the right X's. And we want this. So let's just start with this. Well, if this cell right here equals P, M, and K, what do we want there? A K. And as we copy the formula down, we want it to successively pick that here and this one and put here. So let's go ahead and do equals V lookup. The lookup value is going to be this, and I'm going to lock it hitting the F4 key. 
uh, with dollar sign in front of the row reference, so when we copy down, it's locked, comma. And what is the table array? Well, we're looking up this, so we need that table right there. The first column is the what the VLOOKUP uses. It says, hey, I'm looking at that. I'm going to find a match here. And then it needs to go over to a certain column. F4 key to lock that. There's the table array, comma, now the column index. Now for us, column 1, column 2. In this particular cell, we want 2. When we go down to the next one, we want 3. And then when we go down to the next one, we want 4. Now we could just leave that 2, finish our formula, copy it down. But I don't want to do that. I want to uh, have one formula that I can copy down. Well, the rows function, rows, we can say, hey, I'm in row D13, so D dollar sign 13 colon D13. Well, rows says how many rows are there? Well, how many rows are there between D and D? There's just one. I'm sorry, row 13 and 13. There's just one. But when I copy this down, since that 13 is locked and that one's not, this will turn to 14 when we get down here. And it will be counting how many rows? Two. Well, that's not going to work. That will give us a 1 here, a 2, and a 3. And really, we want 2, 3, 4. So we just add 1. That's our column index, comma, and lookup range. We want exact match, so you put 0. Close parentheses, Control, Enter, and then uh, let's drag it down. Now, that looks good for PM and K, right? There's an, an X there and an X there, but what about that 0? Well, what's happening is it's getting the 0 over here. We could amend our formula here when it's equal to 0 on that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to change the values in the lookup table. Holding Control, I'm going to select that one, that one, that one, and that one. I'm going to do a formula, equals, double quote. That means this table actually has a blank in it. So I'm going to Control Enter to populate all those cells with the formulas. And there you go. So now when it looks up, it's looking up this item right here. It's looking up that blank and throwing it into the cell. All right, finally, uh, this one is the easiest of all. And actually, if this category was explicit enough to the user what they were trying to accomplish, you could just skip over this altogether. All right, equals V lookup. I'm looking up this comma within this table right here. One, two, three, four, five. Oops, I better hit. Oh, I don't need to lock it because we're not copying this. Comma 5, comma 0, close parentheses. And now let's uh, see if this works. And PM better give us, uh, so that's the AM and PM one. Notice the X's are there in the 1650. The PM, the two X's are there in the 24, and then finally the K. And so that would probably be even a little bit better than up here because then the person doesn't have the option of putting X's everywhere. All right, a little fun with uh, problem solving and uh, if function and function vlookup. We'll see you next trick.